So welcome to the second demo of uh, the lecture SQL No SQL. And uh, this time we will be discussing uh, about tools you need to connect to MongoDB and their installations. So let's get started. Uh, so during this uh, workshop, we'll be uh, talking about the three tools which we can use to connect to MongoDB. That is MongoDB Atlas, MongoDB Compass, and uh, MongoShell. So let's get started. Uh, first is uh, Mongo Atlas. So basically, it is a platform that provides an interface to manage and launch your deployment. It is like a database as a service, which helps you to easily set up and manage your database. So basically, you can use this tool for creating a cluster. And using that cluster, you can in turn create a database, collections, documents that uh, basically a MongoDB architecture contains. So that is something that uh, we can use MongoDB Atlas for. The second tool uh, that we're going to be talking about and in depth is called MongoDB Compass. So basically, it's like a graphical user interface for exploring your data. You need not know anything uh, about the MongoDB query syntax or you don't need to query it. You can just explore the data using the UI that they have. So that actually makes it very convenient to analyze the data. Using this specific tool, you can optimize queries, manage indexes, and then explore your data. So that is something that we will go in depth into. Uh, and the third option, uh, like the third uh, tool that we can actually use to connect to MongoDB is MongoShell. So this is something that is totally at your discretion. If you feel that you're very much comfortable with Unix and Linux scripting, uh, this is one of the options that you can use apart from uh, Compass plus Atlas. So basically this is uh, like an interactive JavaScript interface to MongoDB. Uh, you can use it to query uh, and update data as well as perform some administrative operations. So uh, we will not be going further into its installation because it's already given in the Canvas page. You can, if you uh, are very much interested to install it, you can just go through the steps and uh, it will be very uh, helpful for you that way. So the most uh, focus that we're going to have this time is on uh, MongoDB Compass and how to use it. So uh, if you go to the first page of your uh, canvas uh, for week six, you'll be able to find uh, the instructions to download uh, Compass. I'll just reiterate so that it becomes easier for people who have not done it before. Uh, so basically, you can use this uh, link, which will direct you to the MongoDB uh, installation page. Basically, this page contains uh, all the information about the MongoDB Compass uh, version that you want. So basically, you have the flexibility of changing the version as well, but I would suggest to go with the stable one. Uh, also, you can change the platform that you want to use it for according to the PC that you have. And then just uh, hit the ECE package and say download. Uh, when you download it, uh, basically you'll get an exe file, which you click about, like uh, you'll click and it'll give you all the instructions of how to uh, move forward. You need not make any other, other further changes in it. Uh, the default changes are fine. So uh, basically it's just a five to 10 minutes process and the tool will get, will get downloaded into your systems. So let's just see how will it look when it gets uh, installed. It's something like this. You will get a MongoDB uh, Compass app in your systems. So let's just look that how can we uh, connect to a specific cluster and what are the ways of doing that. So here you can see that this is the home page of uh, MongoDB Compass. And basically, uh, what we want to do using this console is that we already have a cluster uh, which has databases, collections, and documents. And we want to get connected to that existing cluster so that we could see that what data is there inside it and analyze it further. So 
for uh, the specific uh, workshop, we'll be using a specific cluster. Uh, its name is stu uh, student. So uh, let's just start with the time that we had connected to MongoDB. Uh, so if I want to get connected to MongoDB, uh, this is the uh, this is the page that we want to connect to first. Uh, basically, if what happens is that whenever you want to connect to MongoDB, uh, MongoDB specific cluster, you can. Uh, give that cluster address in the MongoDB Compass console. So for this workshop, we'll be uh, actually uh, going to, we'll be connecting to this specific cluster wherein uh, the cluster is for a student. So there are three ways of getting connected to these, this specific cluster. One is giving the cluster name, uh, that is the connection string that we have for that specific cluster. And you can copy and paste it to your uh, console in here. After pasting that specific connection string, you'll be able to connect to the data, uh, to the specific cluster that you want to. Uh, another way of uh, connecting to your cluster is by clicking this fill in connection fields individually. You can click here, and uh, fill in all the document or uh, fill in all the details that you have about the cluster. Basically, in here, uh, the details have been given in your uh, specific uh, Canvas page. That is point two, wherein the host name, uh, username, password is all given to you, and you can just add it in here and connect to it. Uh, another way to uh, connect to this specific uh, cluster is to use the more options tab, wherein you will be able to give the uh, replica set name and the reader preference, and then you can connect to it. All this information has been given in uh, your Canvas page. So when we see this specific uh, cluster, we see that we have a lot of lot of database inside uh, inside the specific collection. Uh, we have admin, aggregations, uh, movies, and whatnot. Every specific database has a specific collection which is pertained to it. So basically, we can see that aggregation uh, table over here, the database over here, has about 16 collections inside it. Similarly, uh, Mflix has seven collections uh, inside it and it's taking this kind of memory. So basically MongoDB Compass is something which could make it easy for you to analyze data. So like I said earlier, uh, in a MongoDB structure, there is a database and database has a lot of collections inside it. It basically contains these collections. And each collection is made up of a lot of documents. These documents are in turn made up of fields, wherein every field is a key value pair. And in a document, the document is always represented in a JSON format, which is basically a JavaScript object-oriented notation. So uh, Let's just say that uh, we have these different databases in, uh, in here, and let's just see how actually they look like uh, in practical world. So here, the specific database that we'll be talking about is Mflix, wherein uh, Mflix has about seven collections inside it. So let's just see what is there inside it. When I click inside Mflix, I see that I have seven different collections. And all these seven different collections are basically having different number of documents inside them. So basically what happens is uh, if I present an analogy of this specific uh, MongoDB structure with relational database, what we can say is that every collection inside a, a database is like every table inside a database in a relational database concept. So every collection is basically something related to a table in a relational uh, uh, 
database and every document which is there inside uh, a specific collection for example in here the movies collection has about these numbers of documents so if i see inside it i have uh, these documents which actually uh, is giving me the information about every movie which is there inside every collection so uh, these documents are nothing but like rows which we have in relational database in a specific table so like i said that the specific documents that we have is represented in a json format so basically here for the sake of ui compass gives us a very well defined way of uh, finding the specific document fields but if you want to see how specific json uh, for this document is looks like you can just change your view and see that uh, how this specific json is actually getting represented another uh, thing to look at is that we have another option to view that view this thing it's that is in form of uh, a table so basically different fields in here are in a tabular format and you can use what whichever way you feel to that you feel comfortable with whenever you are uh, analyzing these uh, specific documents let's just go here and see what is all there okay so i have different movies and different day, uh, different documents pertaining to it and i have a lot of information like i have uh, 963534 uh, about uh, documents in here so how do i analyze it so first is let's say that i want to analyze the movies for year 1980 uh, 1896 so what i can do is that i can put in a filter in here wherein i can say year 1986 and just hit find now you can see that i got about 6409 documents which are only for the years 90 1986 so basically this makes it very easy for me to uh, analyze a specific category of record and not only that uh, if let's say that in future i want to add on some uh, other filter so let's say that i want the movie which has title like lucky 7 in it then i can just put a comma and add my another uh, filter in here find and i'll be able to find that specific document which pertains to the specific movie title so basically it makes it very easy for us to uh, analyze some specific category that we'd like to another thing in here is that you can also you also have this option of editing the record this is very uh, like this very much depends on the permission kind of permissions that you have like we don't have permission for making any change to this specific database but yeah we do have this specific option if we want it in future uh let's just uh see another thing which is like schema analysis so in here there is this uh, another tab wherein you can actually analyze the schema so in this case what schema is is like the different key uh, field of every field, like key value of every uh, field so like in this specific document we have different uh, key values like id cast director genre so basically this view gives us a good uh, information about every field that we have in here so let's just go to documents get rid of this filter um i'm just going to go back and then into movies again this one uh m flix movies okay uh now i can go to the schema analysis part where and i can analyze schema for of these different uh documents that i have so let's just say uh run uh the specific viewer rating the specific 
analyze yeah so basic basically uh, we'll get a good information about all the values that are there in this piece this, these specific fields for example the uh, types of genre that we have and the percentage of distribution that they have in these movies uh and then uh the titles that we have in the movie or the specific years in every how many records do we have pertaining to every year these are the kind of distributions that you will be able to analyze by using this specific uh uh tab not only that you can also put in filter over here wherein if you want to analyze a, a specific years movie you can just put in uh, put that filter in here and say analyze so for these uh, documents it will uh, give you the analysis this will be a separate analysis wherein only the documents with year 1986 will be focused so basically you will be able to get all these distribution for all these different fields in this way uh other thing that i'd like to suggest is that take your time this week and uh, and like go through this console explore it more uh try to uh find more new options that that it might be having and it might be very interesting as well so you can try it out on your own and let us know if you have any exciting insights if you like uh another thing that i'd like to show you is so basically till now we were focusing on a cluster which was already created that that is this cluster was already created somebody had already created the databases the collections as well as the documents for it but what if i want to create my own cluster that is something that we have an option here for so basically uh, what happens is that this will take you to the atlas mongodb atlas console and uh you, from here you can just set up your own console and uh, for for atlas you can use this specific service to create your own cluster and which will help you to create your databases inside it and then collections and documents thank you thanks a lot for your time